Okay, so it's six now, so I think we can um, get started and I see that already quite some people has joined us. So good afternoon and thanks a lot for joining us to the second live event of the online bootcamp book. We are very happy to be having the second live event and we hope that um, your studies in the MOOC are going well. We just opened this, uh, this week, the model three of the course, which also happens to be the last. So best of luck as well with the final course assignments, with the peer review and everything. Please keep in mind the course deadline that will be the 27th of October at the end of the day. So please keep that in mind. By then you have had to finish your quiz on the model two and as well to have submitted your activity and to have review three or other activities from your peer review, all of these in model three. So I hope that uh, we wish you all the best of luck with that. My name is Eugenia Casariego. I'm course coordinator together with Ariana, who is also with us today. Hello, Ariana. Hello, everyone. Hello, Eugenia. It's great to be here with you today. And I'm looking forward to all your presentations and to learning uh, from and together with you. Indeed, and so the, the purpose of this Teach Meet is basically to inspire you to um, kind of share your pra best practices in Code Week so that you have some ideas for your final course assignment. And as well, um, remember that your, that your final course assignment, which is to submit this activity to the Code Week map, does not necessarily to, uh, need to be something original. You can take one of the lesson plans from the learning bits that we have seen during the course. You can draw inspiration from your colleagues today. Also, some colleagues have created some activities that are, you can find on the course on Module 3. So you can take any of those activities that are already made, carried out with your students, and actually submit it on the code week map. So you don't need to create something from scratch that's uniquely yours. You just need to carry it out and make sure that it's an activity related to coding and computational thinking. <laughs> So you can basically choose any approach to coding that you feel fits best your students or your expertise or your interests in, of course, any subject area. So we hope that with these uh, nine wonderful presentations, eight wonderful presentations, you're going to draw some inspiration from your colleagues. And I don't want to take more time for the important things. So today we're going to have eight presentations from Artur, from Monia, from Daniela and Martina, from Estefania, from Leopoldo, from Marina, from Maria, from Maria and from Imen. So I hope that you draw some inspiration from your colleagues and feel free to type any questions on the chat for the speakers. We can actually translate it to them later. We'll also hopefully have some time at the end for some questions and answers. So feel free to, so feel free to interact in the chat, to ask questions and to, and to interact with your colleagues. This is the moment really to learn from each other, to draw inspiration and to share your own experiences. So once again, thanks a lot for joining us today. And of course, thanks a lot to the people who are presenting today. And to our nine to our nine speakers. So thank you very much. And without further ado, I will just introduce Arthur, who will tell us a bit more about coding with smartphones and app development, which is an approach to coding that we have seen in Model 3. Um, Arthur is one of our very appreciated leading teachers from Portugal, and he's actually the one that who has written the learning bit on artificial intelligence. So that's um, also something you can definitely go and check out. So Arthur, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, so. I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, I, I would also ask people that are with their mics on to turn them, turn them off. It can be a bit uh, unnerving. I'm very lazy about screen sharing. I, I prefer to share my entire screen. It's easier. Uh, I guess right now you are seeing uh, my screen, right? Yes, perfectly. OK, so, uh, so let's do uh, a bit, uh, two or three minutes of death by PowerPoint, shall we? So, uh, hello. My name, as you as uh, as you well have well mentioned, is is Artur. I'm a teacher at the Group School of Indonesia in Portugal. And uh, during the pandemic, uh, I had a problem. My I, my IT room, my ICT room, had to be closed because we we did we did not have uh, safety conditions for our students. So, what have we done? We decided to shift ICT teaching into mobile devices. And uh, one of the challenges of shifting ICT teaching to mobile devices is exactly how can we foster coding and computational thinking skills using, uh, well, uh, good coding environments. So the first thing to, to think about is why should we use smartphones and tablets as mobile and mobile devices to uh, foster coding skills? I'd, I'd say for three reasons. First, availability. Remember, what is the one thing you don't leave your house without? 
your keys, of course, and maybe your smartphone. And if you leave your smart your smartphone behind, you will probably go straight back to the house to, to fetch it, not just because your smartphone is uh, a communication device, but because of all the things, of all the things mentally that you externalize in your smartphone, your photos, your memories, your apps, etc. Secondly, because they are personal devices, they are the children, the students' devices, they are their own. They can appropriate what they do and do it on their own time. Lastly, because it allows us to compute anywhere, whenever we want, because uh, smartphones and tablets are actually quite powerful computers. Uh, we generally see the computer as the laptop or the desktop, but smartphones and tablets are in essentially uh, essentially computers also. They just have different uh, interfaces and different different ways to use them. And they are they are also quite powerful in terms of mult multimedia applications, etc. So why should we not uh, harness that power for the our children's empowerment? Then again, why should we not? Sorry, I just mangled my English. Why should we not use mobile devices? OK. Again, three reasons. The first thing is uh, that some of the most popular coding environments don't adapt very well to small screens. If you try to run Scratch on a, on a small the smartphone like, you, like I have right here, it's an horrid experience because the, the size of the window does not resize. It's impossible to teach and to do something on Scratch. Also with code.org resources, it, it, they become way too small. We just, the kids always have to, to scroll up, scroll down. It's complex. So uh, that's an interface question and some environments don't adapt well. The second uh, why not question is uh, some coding apps, which you can find on Play Store or, or iOS app stores, are too basic. They're, they're, they're mostly simple games that teach some coding um, concepts, sequen sequence, sequ sequentiality, uh, um, uh, just, just missed my words, uh, cycles, etc. But they don't allow you to create com more uh, complex stuff. Like, for example, Scratch does. We love Scratch because it's low floor, high ceiling. You can start by creating very, very simple stuff. And then you have the ability, the space, the mental space, and the, and the resources to create far more complex things. And most of the apps that are available on the app stores for coding and education don't do that. They are just very narrow apps. And finally, one that for me is paramount, one of the most important, is the ergonomics issue. Uh, kids tend to do this when they are on a mobile on a mobile phone. I have we always have to push them back, sit right, sit up, rest your eyes, don't don't strain your eyes looking at the screen for too for too long. So this is th these are three reasons why we should not use mobile devices on our classrooms, which seems mighty strange that I'm th that I'm sharing my experience on using mobile devices and I use the why not to show you that these are problems we have to take account for. So how can we code on mobile devices? As I've said earlier, if you do a, a search on any app store, uh, you will quickly find a lot of coding apps for children, really a lot. Some paid, some free, most are basically games. They're fun, of course, but we as teachers, we need to do something more. We do. We need to, to give them coding environments in which they can begin by very small projects and then be able to grow, right? That's what we you do, that's what I do, that's what Code Week is all about. So basically there are two very interesting uh, coding apps, which is Pocket Code, which is my favorite, you might have noticed because there's a, a glowing heart next to the pocket code and a Tinker, which is um, another environment that is more scratch like. It's easier if you know scratch because the interface is the same. So onwards. What is Tinker and how can we work with this app? Tinker is a kind of a kind of a scratch clone, which which was conceived to fit in small screens. OK, you, what you are seeing on my screen is basically uh, an example of, a, of an algorithm developed on, uh, on, on Pocket Code. Uh, the main principle of Pocket Code is to adapt and, and, to, and to very easily be used on any smartphone or mobile device. So a kid can use his very small smartphone, 
or is very not so small tablet. OK, so it's available for iOS, Android and for those of us that use Huawei uh, without Google Play services, the 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 the, the, um, the coding team has also developed a version specific for Huawei devices. I have very little Android devices in which this app does not work. It has to be a very, very old Android that um, to be to not to be able to run pocket code. As I've said, its interface is very well adapted to small screens, which can be a great thing and also a bad thing, because if you are used to the, to the Scratch environment, everything is in one page. And with Pocket Code, things are in their own pages because that's the adaptation to the mobile device screens, which are far smaller. We, we cannot have everything in one page. We have separate menus. menus. Uh, Scratch is developed by Technical University of Graz in Austria with partnerships ranging from M MIT to Google. It's basically a volunteer project, uh, so which means that uh, some things are not quite up to par. For example, um, if you use uh, Pocket Code in non-English settings, like me, I use it in Portuguese, the translations are a bit weird because they mix English and Portuguese words, but then again, it's a volunteer effort, so we cannot expect perfection, but but this is probably one of one of the most powerful coding environments. So, oh sorry, uh, I'm just talking about uh, this this environment. But I think better better than than talking about is showing you how to do something. Are you still seeing my screen, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well. So at this time you are seeing my smartphone, my smartphone, right? That's correct. Okay, so, so I'm, not, I'm just going to, to show you some examples. These are um, uh, examples for my classes and also examples that, that I do during my classes. Uh, right now, I'm using Pocket Code as a code week activity. I've uh, partnered with a project at my school, at my school in Portugal, which is called uh, National Film Plan. The idea is to foster cinem cinematographic culture in students and with uh, we've partnered on a cool project which uh, teaches kids to create tomatropes, the small uh, animation devices from the 19th century. And what they are learning with me as a code activity is how to code their own tomatrop, doing something like this. OK, so what you are seeing is basically small animation coded on pocket code. This is a, a very cool uh, starting activity because it allows you to work with the app to work with um, backgrounds, to to develop or import your own backgrounds, to work with actors and objects. And as you can see, the coding itself is very, very easy. Another thing that I like to show my students uh, and which some of them like to, uh, to do it, to try it also, is a coding app that allows uh, their phones to recognize their faces, which is a very, very simple thing to do on Pocket Code. You are now seeming to uh, see me twice, which is uh, which I do not wish upon anybody. And now you're not seeing me. So basically, this is a very simple coding app uh, that uses rather complex computational thinking skills and techniques, but which any any student can do can develop on their own uh, smartphone. But this is what I do as a teacher to show my students to spark them. And what do my students do for me? OK, let's see if I can show you. A very small game developed by a 10 year old last year. As you can see, Pocket Code uh, has a lot of screens. What you are seeing right now is the main program uh, environment, which we, in which you see Fundu, which is the backgrounds and actors and objects. And now any actor has their own coding. If if I add the English version, you will, you will see the events, variables, etc. in English, but it's in Portuguese. And now I'm just going to run the program and see. Sorry, it, the image can be a bit wonky right now, and I, I, and I can simply play, play a small game developed by, by one of my students. Uh, the image is a bit wonky because the app I'm using to translate my smartphone to the computer sometimes is a bit small when it comes to video feeds. OK, so what can you do? What can you do with uh, Pocket Code? Basically anything you, you would do on Scratch or other environments with some constraints. Uh, you can also share them on the CatRobot project site 
and share share them with the world. And basically, this uh, this application, this app, this coding environment allows me to work with my students on safe pandemic uh, conditions and also to um, excite them into use their mobile devices not as just to, to consume information to game or to exchange messages but to develop their own computational thinking skills and especially to develop their own creative skills and with that uh, final thought i leave you and thank you for the opportunity and i hope i'll i have given you some ideas as for i've given you some ideas as for projects that you can develop using uh, mobile devices on your classrooms and other contexts. Just one small note, uh, last week I've done a very small event called Week also, in which I've challenged small children that were, uh, particip that, that, were sh that were children of participants on a literature festival, and I've challenged them to, to, to code their own rockets on their smartphones, and this is what happened. So any questions, uh, just put them in the chat, or at the end of the of the of the of the teach meet i will gladly answer them and you can also contact me using my email for any discussion that you you would like to put me thank, thank you, you so much thank you arthur that was really really amazing and that's what we've also seen in the chat uh, teachers uh, and you especially uh, are really resourceful and it's amazing to see uh, what teachers do to empower the students uh, no matter what is happening, uh, what adversities are there. So Absolutely. thank you so much. Uh, we, we've given you a little bit more time so. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. because yes, you, you, are, you, you are the first uh, and uh, you have done the ice breaking, so I'm sure but we have to be mindful about uh, the time also my, with the next my, speakers. But please uh, stay with us here. I'm sure there will be questions and uh, at the end of the teach meet, uh, hopefully we will have time to answer them, but feel free, feel free to write your answers in the chat. Thanks one, once again, it was really amazing. And now it's time for our second speaker, uh, Monia Mahmoudi. Uh, can you please join us on the stage? It's really, really great uh, to go from Portugal to Tunisia. Welcome, Thank Monique. You. Hello, everyone. I am so happy to join you. Thank you, Eugenia, Maria, and Arthur. Uh, I am so glad to uh, be with you in this teach meet. So I am Monia Mahmoudi from Tunisia. I am computer science teacher. I am a Europe Code Week leading teacher of Tunisia. I am al also study group leader during this uh, bootcamp MOOC. Uh, I am a teacher in the Pioneer Preparatory School. Uh, Khaira Jim Besha of Sidi Bouzid in the middle of Tunisia. Uh, my activity is storytelling as a teaching tool. I use it Scratch in the next slide. I used Scratch with the 7th grade and 8th grade to tell a story. So we talked about the importance of telling stories in education. How to tell a story with a Scratch? Learning skills when telling stories. So my uh, students uh, have the opportunity to be creative. They create their own stories and their own sprites and characters. Uh, using Scratch. So, uh, as you see in this picture, uh, they, uh, they create their own uh, uh, personalities or characters using Scratch. And I shared with you some uh, a padlet in how to be safe and uh, healthy during COVID-19 for the eighth grade and how to be safe and smart online for the eighth grade. But for the seventh grade, we used the uh, scratch to tell a story about computer and how to use it and what are the components of a computer. Uh, on the next slide, I shared with you some pictures here. Uh, as you see, they create their own sprites uh, like a flower or a robot. Uh, and uh, they uh, can uh, write on the backdrop of uh, the scratch screen how to be safe and smart online. On the next uh, slide, 
we shared uh, our certificates of participation. So, and we think happy code week, uh, everyone. This is my presentation. Thank you so much. And if you have uh, uh, questions, uh, I can share with you. You can see the happiness on the eyes of my students. Really, they were so happy to receive. They, this is the first time they receive, they, they receive uh, certificates of participation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Monia. That was very interesting as well, like to see the many different uses of Scratch and to see as well the many different ways in which we can use this very powerful tool. So thank you very much. I invite anyone who wants to uh, pose a question to Monia, who is also one of our very valuable leading teachers. Um, very valuable leading teacher. So thank you very much, Monia. That was very inspiring to see. As well, um, Monia has shown us one great resource of one great resource of Code Week, which is the Code Week certificate for your students that I invite everyone as well to check. You have it on the toolkits as well as you can do it automatically on the on the website. And now I would like to invite our next speakers. Uh, we're going from Tunisia this time to Croatia. So I would like to invite to the stage Daniela um, Martina from Croatia. Um, so very welcome. I, I see you on the speakers. I think you were here. Hello. Yes, Hello. I see your camera. Hello. Good afternoon. The stage is yours. Hello. Greetings to all present. Uh, we are two teachers from uh, primary school ball in Croatia, uh, from the most beautiful town on the world. Uh, my name is <laughs> Daniela, <laughs> and uh, I am a primary uh, school teacher. My my student uh, are nine years old. Uh, student this year and they are very uh, uh, creative, uh, 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 cooperative and very curiosity uh, students. So I decided to do a European Code Week with them uh, last year and it was uh, very nice and um, they learn a lot. So I decided that uh, we will make it uh, and this year too. So. Uh, hello, my name is Martina and I'm a math and uh, IT teacher and uh, after many years uh, this year I finally have a class again uh, to teach IT and uh, this is the first year <coughs> att uh, attending a code week and uh, I decided to apply because coding helps uh, de develop uh, 21st century skills like coding, the numerical thinking, uh, problem solving, uh, creativity and uh, teamwork. So Daniela, you can tell what you did with <laughs> yes. your students. So I must say that I am very lucky to cooperate with Martina because she is our math teacher and she is full of uh, uh, ideas how to make project. So uh, before two weeks it was um, World Weekly uh, Universe uh, and uh, uh, Martina has a idea, had idea to have exhibition in our school uh, about space. So uh, students paint, recycled, explored planets, uh, space bodies, and women flying to space. So uh, on the exhibition, we had many posters, presentations. Uh, students were very uh, creative in the, the, the activities and also we presented the exhibition uh, to our partners in uh, Erasmus Plus program, uh, Cultural Bridges in Europe, and also we uh, participate uh, with that uh, exhibition uh, to Erasmus Days. So uh, I must say that uh, it was logical to continue with this uh, with space in European Code Week, and we uh, had lots of activity about that for the younger students because I work with um, uh, younger students. Uh, I have two activities. First activity uh, was um, uh, coding in a binary system, so kids uh, draw in a pixel. They draw uh, rockets and uh, robots. They must uh, decipher uh, code and uh, draw the pictures. The second activity was uh, programming in uh, Scratch. They uh, have to figure out where to launch a rocket 
to the moon, uh, a student begin to learn programming uh, in Scratch. The workshop is designed to support older students. And Martina helped them because uh, that uh, older student was Martina's students. Yes, and uh, yeah, uh, in addition, my students have two more Scratch workshops. Uh, one uh, was uh, uh, titled uh, The Dog Lost in Space, and second was Discovering a New Planet. And uh, we did a third uh, workshop uh, in Studio Code and designed a dance with robots and aliens. So we also uh, uh, register event at uh, UO Code Week and uh, in Facebook, uh, Facebook. And we were surprised uh, by the interest of the members of the group of uh, our event. Uh, we have set up uh, padlets with uh, materials for, activ uh, for activities and we contact and uh, share uh, instruction uh, daily. And uh, some members uh, are in, uh, encountering coding and code uh, week for the first time, so uh, they want to sign up. Some find and uh, interesting topics and some probably just want the materials. Uh, so uh, we, uh, now we will show you a short uh, video with uh, our activities. Window. Can you see? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the sound, do do you do we need the sound? Just click the include computer sound. Mm -hmm. Computer sound. Before, so uh, unshare your presentation, your video, and then do it again. Mm -hmm. So stop sharing yes. now. Stop sharing. Stop sharing. Uh, okay, sorry. Sorry. Yes. And now when you start, uh, when you want to share, you will see this uh, uh, slider that you need to click uh, include computer audio. On top, just above the window sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's now okay. Can you can you hear it now? Uh, no. 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 Uh -huh. no. It's the same solution that we found yesterday, so it should be in the same yesterday. manner. Yeah. So it when you click the, it, yes, when you click this arrow for sharing, uh, then you will have uh, this option share content. Uh, and then on the right to this, uh, you will see include computer sound and there is a uh, oh, slide. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, I saw that. OK, oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Again. I hope you like it, the video. As you we can see. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so you. that's all from us. 
Okay, thank you so much, Daniela and Martina. Uh, that you. was really great. It was great to see how you two coll collaborate. So it really teamwork makes uh, yes. dream work. And also, um, I would say it's great to see how you inspire uh, teachers in our community. So this is always very important that we share what we do with our colleagues. Yes, Thank you yes. so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye bye. Uh, and now from Croatia, I would like to go to Spain and invite uh, uh, Leopoldo. Uh, Leopoldo uh, from Mosquera Tabor. Hello, hello, welcome to the stage. Uh, so the floor is yours, and the five minutes uh, are totally yours. Here you okay. See. Uh, are you? Do you have the presentation? Yes, we can see yes? it. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, so my name is Leopoldo. Uh, I am a teacher of Spain. Uh, my school is in Aranjuez, in the south of the community of Madrid. Madrid is here, and um, 45 kilometers to the south is our school. So uh, I have been participated in the in the EU in, in this school week, and uh, my last. Uh, idea about uh, how to to include a, a, an activity is uh, this uh, challenge that uh, I call it Processing Mondrian. The challenge uh, um, is uh, it will be made with uh, processing um, software. Processing is a software uh, that uh, uh, bring us the possibility to to put code and obtain uh, a visual effect very quickly. So it's very grateful, um, and the students are really motivated to use it. And uh, well, it's um, open source hardware uh, software, so it's easy to obtain. And we will see some examples that uh, show us how the code is not very complex and you can do something very interesting. Um, the, the challenge is start um, drawing uh, this kind of uh, Mondrian style pictures and then uh, the students uh, who are um, 17, 16, 17 years, years old, so they are finishing the secondary school. Um, they have to, to move uh, to obtain uh, some, some movement in the picture of Mondrian initially. So we will see the first, uh, the first solution is the simplest one. When if, if we look to the uh, to the code, we will see how uh, you define a line uh, uh, right in the coordinates of the of the two points of the stream of the line, and and uh, and uh, after that, you can uh, um, you can draw the the, the rectangles. In this case, uh, my student had decided to put uh, the definition of the field of the rectangle, uh, totally open it uh, with a random function. So when you press the key with uh, the function key presets, when you, you press any key, the, um, the random stars and the, the, the colors are not uh, the same uh, in, in every moment. No? It's a, a simple idea, but very, very effective, uh, I think. The second example we will see. Well, this is example 
is a bit more risky. Uh, it's, uh, the, the student uh, start using um, uh, decide to use uh, conditionals that defines uh, exactly uh, which letter of the keyboard you you will press. And uh, pressing the letters, you can uh, create a new uh, Mondrian variation. And that uh, show that the challenge is uh, very uh, closed, uh, very close because the, 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 the Mondrian style will be very close for them, but they are uh, total, they are free to, to decide the complexity of the code. Uh, we will see the next example, more complex. In this example, the, the picture changes uh, a lot because uh, the, the rectangles are moving uh, across the... Yes. I'm not sure we are seeing the right screen indeed as some people is right and I was wondering the same because we still see the very same slide um, so we have only seen one slide. No, it's different, no? Um, so far we're in slide four and we don't don't see the, the examples that you're mentioning I believe. Oh. Maybe but if you put it on presenter mode just like the entire screen that would help. Yes, it's, it's, it's um... But that's not what we're seeing. Maybe if you go back, you to didn't Amazon. receive uh, the changes of the no. No, so we are st we. The only thing we see is the, the deck of the presentation, but not not the whole presentation in presenter mode. I think that's the the issue. But indeed, you're receiving very nice feedback on the chat. Now I see it moving indeed because that's I'm seeing your deck, so I see you moving around the deck. Uh, well, I will try to to show you quickly. Um, the the videos that I I was talking about. This is the this is the no, yeah. this is the first one. Can you can you watch it? Yes. Yeah, we just saw it moving. Yeah. Yes, this is the first one. I told this was the simplest. You need only to 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 press a key, and every time the colors will change. The second one uh, is uh, will be this. This is the second one when uh, I, I, I have the student have put variables and um, color change, but the, the shape and, and the forms will change too. So it's a bit more complex with with. Uh, Defining exactly the, the, the letters you, you will use. The, the next example is um, this one. And, and in this case, the, the figures changes a lot of the, the dimensions have changed. And you need to define some variables to, to make this possible. It's a totally new picture uh, from Mondrian in this case. <laughs> uh, we'll see the different possibilities uh, using some special letters from the keyboard. And uh, the last example I will show you is this. It's really complicated to code, but uh, the students uh, need to to try it and to move uh, to move the squares around the. So this is uh, this is my experience. Um, thank you, thank you very much for for watching. Thank you very much, Apollo. That was very interesting. You also have very nice feedback on the chat. Indeed, it's always very inspiring to see the combination of coding and arts. And Mondrian is indeed a perfect example with its uh, geography, um, geometry and its uh, as well um, 
uh, straight lines. So thank you very much. That was very inspiring and you found uh, very interesting feedback on the chat. Um, thank you. So now we're going all the way to Greece and we're visiting Marina, who will tell us a bit more. I think Marina, if I'm not mistaken, is actually taking us to the moon from Greece. So Marina, the floor is yours. Hello. Hello. Greetings from the ninth primary school of Komotini, Greece. My name is Marina Molla. I'm an EU code leading teacher and a scientist ambassador. I'm together with two colleagues of mine in our school. Uh, here is uh, Dimitra Armenzo. She is a teacher in the second grade. And uh, Stefano Jovas, he's the sub headmaster of our school and the physical educator. Uh, so, the ninth primary school of Komotini is an urban school located in the northeastern part of Greece. Almost half of the students come from marginalized settlements of the city and belong to the Muslim minority of Thrace. Their school attendance is irregular and often leads to school dropout. Thus, the aim of the school and all the teachers is to offer inclusive education and uh, innovate our school. That was the reason we uh, applied uh, to become a study group uh, for EU Code Week uh, online bootcamp and uh, were accepted. Uh, the, uh, our team started... Oh, I haven't uh, started my presentation. I have sent it to you. Indeed, um, I was about to ask. Do you want me to say yes. it from my side or would you like to say it? Yes, from yes. Side? Would you please? Yeah, just give me a sec. Mm -hmm. Sorry for that. <laughs> Do you have it? Okay, then. This is a photo of our school. And uh, let's go to the second slide. This is the team. We started as a team, a study group team of uh, four and grow. So uh, on the, yes, uh, we have grown now. On uh, the second uh, slide, uh, we have 131 students that uh, age uh, are between six and, ye and 11 years old. And uh, the personnel of uh, our school is uh, 26 teachers. Uh, we started the study group and uh, had uh, meetings in the amphitheater of uh, our school. So we um, enrolled in uh, the MOOC. Uh, we navigated uh, through the platform and uh, discussed uh, how we were going to implement EU Code Week activities and implement it collaboratively and interdisciplinary. So, uh, I'm going to start with uh, Triada Dautidou. She is our special need uh, teacher. Uh, she gave uh, her students in the special class a box with parts of um, uh, that uh, make uh, three spaceships and uh, had cards inside that uh, have uh, step by step um, um, that have uh, step by step um, what to do for her students uh, and are aligned uh, with the personalized learning needs. So the problem they had to solve was how to make these uh, spaceships. Uh, you can see a student holding the cards. And uh, as um, when they did it, uh, they decided to go to their classes 
and with the help of uh, the teachers of the sixth grade, they uh, went to their classmates, uh, showed them the box, and uh, their classmates followed uh, the, what the cards, the instructions, and uh, made the spaceship, and then expanded the activity by making uh, small astronauts but this time they made the card their own with their own instructions step by step. You can see uh, the class uh, and uh, the board with what they did. So we have made our spaceships and our astronauts. Now it's time to use Scratch. Our ICT teacher Ioannis Mikhailidis in our ICT lab um, instructed and guided our students uh, to uh, travel from planet to planet with their own spaceship. And uh, here are their snapshots and the code. So let's go to the next slide. Um, I, uh, as a teacher, use a Tinkercad uh, to uh, interdisciplinary, um, interdisciplinary and cross-curricularly in uh, my classes. And uh, we made our moon camp uh, for the astronauts in Tinkercad. You can see what the students did. We have an online class in Tinkercad where the students are um, uh, are in and uh, in their class they can go and um, have uh, their temp their uh, templates and make their moon camps and uh, then Dimitra Armenzo who is here with me uh, did in the second grade a moon uh, camp you can see it uh, below at uh, the Tinkercad activities with uh, um, blocks, uh, they uh, made uh, the camp of the astronauts, and uh, they also used tangram uh, to make. Uh, and the design is of a student of hers. Uh, the tangram design is a, a spaceship, and uh, then uh, Stefanos Zovas, uh, our physical. Uh, educator, uh, trained our little astronauts, giving them detailed, a detailed routine to follow and train in our courtyard. And uh, they had the fun and enjoyed it. And uh, you can also see that we have a wall, a climbing wall in our gym, in our school, where they, where they also follow instructions and uh, themselves, they did uh, a hopscotch and a dance step by step. And in these activities, the whole school was involved uh, the previous week. So we are hoping uh, to involve all the teachers involved and make uh, hopefully our students EU Code Week ambassadors. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Marina. That was really, really amazing. And uh, uh, what especially what I'm impressed with uh, is uh, how uh, successfully and how skillfully you combined the, the study groups, uh, which means teacher professional development. We, and then you applied what you learned in the study groups in your classrooms. So that's really, really amazing how teacher learning and student learning work together, how they uh, go hand in hand. Thank you so much for this amazing presentation and all the work that you do also, especially as study group leaders. Yes, your students are really lucky to have you. Uh, thank you so much, Marina. Uh, and uh, uh, now from Greece, uh, we invite you to Croatia again. Uh, Maria is waiting for us in Croatia. Maria, can you please join us on the stage? Hello. Ms. 
Hello. Yes, okay. It's yes, me. Yes. Maria Klopochar. <laughs> yes. Hi. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I will share my presentation and we can start. Okay, you can see. Uh, for the start, hello everybody. My name is Maria Klokočar and I'm a computer science teacher in Pavlik Miškina Primary School. It's uh, located in Zagreb. If we were in Croatia now, we would say Dobar ve Dobra večer or Dobar dan svima. It would be official greeting for good afternoon or good evening. So, Dobro večer, odnosno Dobar dan svima. I would like to present my idea of creating robots in pixel art. I, was I will use laser. laser. So we can start. Uh, next week, I will do pixel art as a free online drawing tool. And uh, my children, kids, will uh, create interesting art of uh, I, uh, creating robots. They will create robots. Uh, I saw that you every, uh, everywhere you were all uh, doing this uh, code week, but I set up, set up our code week next week. So I don't have uh, pictures of what were we doing. I will uh, send you it next week. Uh, first, my fourth graders, they're my uh, youngest students, will draw with pixels. Idea is to compose uh, unique robots with all possible combinations combinations of pixels in the tool pixel art, and uh, we learned we learned about how robots and technology help everyday uh, in people uh, everyday people in all professions. They know uh, that they uh, can help in um, industry, medicine that they're used for playing and learning, but they're very, very, very into space and universe and underwater research. So I will see what they will draw and create with pixel art. Uh, we will start with conversation about what we know for motivation. And after repeating what we know, we will put our, ide our, our ideas on image and paper, in our case, pixel art. Uh, I will show them the tools, what they can do, uh, colors that they can use, and uh, I will see what they will create. My idea is uh, that students use their creativity, computational thinking, that they develop uh, skills of creative thinking and create multiple solutions for some problem. In our case, uh, is that uh, we will create those robots that can help people in everyday uh, works. And I want to encourage students' uh, interest in programming. They are only 10 years old, so they will have, um, tr uh, we will uh, uh, code in Scratch in other uh, years. The goal of the presentation is to show students interesting tool which can be used for all kinds of drawing ideas from making, I don't know, favorite game characters to creating own uh, work arts in every field of interest. Uh, after that, I put one to do list that after we uh, learn how to use pixel art, we don't just use them, uh, it once, one time, but I want that in December uh, we make one big Christmas tree from the paper and that we decorate it with drawings uh, that we will make in our uh, this pixel art drawing tool. So they memorize the new tool and reuse it in different uh, situations, not only for one thing, but to uh, reuse and learn from it again. It's my idea, it's short, and uh, I hope they will enjoy. Thank you very much, Maria. That was very inspiring as well. It's uh, indeed pixel art is actually a great tool because it actually helps you teach as well computational thinking, but as well basic coding skills and actually it can be applied to any ages. So from the very young ones to actually the older ones or the ones like 10, 11 years old, like your students. So thank you very much. That was actually very inspiring and very useful. 
And I recommend everyone as well to do pixel art. I think it's a very easy way to introduce the students to computational thinking. So thank you again, Maria. It was a pleasure to hear you as always. And now we'll travel again back to Tunisia, where Imen will tell us more about text-based programming. So Imen, the, the floor is yours. Imen, are you still in the room with us? Imen, can you hear us? I saw you before, so not yeah. sure if we have Imen some connection. Here, I can see her, yes, but maybe there is something wrong with, ah, uh, with the mic. Connection. Uh, Iman, uh, your uh, microphone is uh, still muted. Let me, I can help. No, I cannot unmute. I cannot uh, unmute her mic from my side. Imen, um, maybe you can enter and re-enter again in the room? Because I saw your camera before. Can you not type in the chat if you can hear us, for example, or are you having what type of technical issues and how can we help? Yeah, so let's let's wait uh, for a few moments and uh, I'm sure Iman will uh, be able to to uh, change the settings or maybe it would be a good idea to to leave the call and then go back in and it will work because I know that uh, she is ready. Uh, ah, so and that's, I cannot activate my microphone. Oh. Um, uh, it's a pity. Uh, would it work even if as Ariana suggests you leave the room and re-enter again? Okay, I see she has left. Okay, Let's just wait a few it. moments. So in the well, meantime, oh, sorry. Yes, oh, yeah. I, am, I am here. Sorry. Yeah, good. Ah, perfect. Good. Okay. Okay, I, uh, I let me share and hear you. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, first of all, I am so glad uh, to be uh, here with us to present uh, uh, my part uh, in this uh, Teach Meet. So I am uh, Iman Taktak Marzouk. I am uh, uh, eTwinning uh, Ambassador and Europe Code Week Ambassador. Uh, I am an ICT teacher from Pioneer Middle School, uh, Sfax, Tunisia. Uh, Today, I represent uh, the eTwinning project Green Behavior Code. Sorry. Yes, uh, this eTwinning project Green Behavior Code uh, is uh, an eTwinning project. In fact, eTwinning offers a platform for staff, teachers, e teachers, etc., to communicate, collaborate, develop projects share and in short feel and be part of the most exciting learning community in Europe. You know that eTwinning is co-funded by the Erasmus Plus, the European Programme for Education and Training. The uh, project overview of uh, Green Behaviour Code, we want to uh, make our pupils aware that our behaviours affect deeply the environment. They think about alternative behaviours more uh, illustrative to the environment. First, the pupils focus on the environmental problems and risks in our communities, 
in our country, sorry, and compare with partners using online collaborative tools. Second, pupils work in international teams to propose solutions and more attentive behavior and habits. Each team brainstorm via Pixel class, uh, then they use the stories and avatars created collaboratively to be coded using Scratch. In fact, Scratch is a visual programming language that lets students create their own interactive stories, games and animations. As the students design Scratch projects, they learn to think creatively, reason systematically and work collaboratively. <clears throat> Each team has a Scratch studio to collaborate together in order to obtain a collaborative code. Our purpose in this project is to produce a green behavior code to spread around in the community. We have made a live event among students in which each team present their codes. Then pupils will vote for the best green behavior code. That will be our commitment to protect our environment. A green behavior code is a project uh, made in 2020-2021. Uh, uh, it involves four countries, Spain, Italy, Romania and Tunisia, with 105 students and four teachers. The aims of the project, uh, at the end of this project, the students are able to raise awareness about environment and lifestyle, promote diversity and make them more appreciative of what they have, learn how to program a concrete code, develop the pupils coding skills and uh, develop inter their entrepreneurial behavior and attitude. And we look to train pupils to be active members in civil society. By the end of this e twinning project, students have created positive behaviors and habits, discovered new online apps and tools, worked collaboratively, improve their digital skills in coding. In fact, we have common uh, products as a result of our collaborative work. We have made nine collaborative scratch code, codes. The schools of this project are from Spain, Italy, Romania and Tunisia. And they will focus on one collaborative activity, which is the most collaborative activity in our project. It's called working with international teams of students to obtain international collaboration. Uh, I will explain the idea process. The idea consists in creating a green behavior code using Scratch program. First, students use forums to brainstorm uh, about the misinformation related to the nature and search the right news. This activity helps them acknowledge the benefits of digital communities and resources while guiding them to successfully navigate potential and pitfalls in their digital lives. Sorry. Go back to. Yes, OK, then uh, they use Pixton to create class per team in which they, in which they create uh, stories related to nature and green. This activity helps them enha enhance their imagination and offers them new original ideas to be used later in coding. And as the principal step of our collab collaboration, students use the images already created in their Pixel teams as backdrops to their scratch codes. In fact, Romanian, uh, Romanian students of each team start coding an idea related to the Earth protection. Then they share them on the scratch studio of their team. Then uh, second, Italian students open the last code, click on the remix button, then they continue developing the Romanian idea by adding their thoughts. Third, Tunisian students open the Italian code, click on the remix button, then they continue coding. And finally, Spanish students open the Tunisian code, click on the remix and complete coding. So each team will have its green behavior code. We obtain nine scratch codes we have because we have nine teams and we have made a live event to vote for the best code to be our commitment as green behavior to our project. How uh, the trans transnational groups are created? In fact, pupils share their scratch presentation in which they introduce themselves, their hobbies, their ambitions. Uh, I will show you one example. For example, we show you the Tunisian students 
their presentation. So my students uh, try to code and try to present themselves using Scratch. Then they go to the Scratch st studio and put their presentation here, as you can see here. The same thing with Romania, Romanian, Spanish and Italian students. Uh, according to the students presentation, we have made these analysis. So we have made a table. To uh, uh, have the same, uh, they have uh, names with the same hobbies and the same ambitions to create international teams. According to the final analysis, we have obtained these multinational groups. So we have a, a nine team. Each team is uh, composed with Romanian, uh, Spanish, Italian and Tunisian students. And each team has a forum, a Pixon and a Scratch studio. I will show you an example of team work. For example, I uh, I, we will focus on Team 7. Uh, this team works on SDG 13, climate change. Uh, first step, they work on forums. Students start their work by brainstorming activity about media literacy and misinformation. Why media literacy and misinformation? Because it was the annual team of each winning last year, in which they share their strategies of images analysis. analysis. Uh, this is a link of the forum in the twin space of the project. They they focus on uh, the false uh, posts and they uh, each student try to write its, uh, his or her opinion and with the justification. I, back, I go back to this way. OK. This is small activities to learn about media literacy. And these are some screenshots of students interaction in their forum team. Second step, uh, we have created stories with Pixton. So uh, in fact, students of team seven use Pixton to create creative stories uh, related to the nature and green. This activity helps them enhance their imagination and of offers them new original ideas to be used uh, later in coding with Scratch. And these are the students comics of team seven. These are the students and the stories, Pixton stories of each student. As the third step, uh, we have made a collaborative green behavior code. In fact, students of team seven use the images already created in their Pixton teams as backdrops to their scratch codes. And Scratch Studio is created for Team 7 to let Teams members code collaboratively. I will show you the link of Scratch Studio. Uh, this is the Scratch Studio of Team 7. As you can see here, the team consists of the following students. We have two Romanian students, two Spanish students, two Italian students, and two Tunisian students. And these are the different codes remixed by each uh, students. To continue coding. Uh, Romanian students start coding an idea about ecology life, then they share it on the Scratch studio of their team. Uh, then Italian students open the last code, click on remix button. This is the remix button, the green button. Then they continue developing the Romanian idea. Tunisian students open the Italian code, uh, click on remix, the green button remix, then they continue coding. In fact, each student give a piece of piece, uh, a piece tips to preserve and save our environment. And the Spanish students open the Tunisian code and continue coding by clicking on the remix uh, button. And this is the final code written collaboratively by the students of Team 7. Uh, I will show you. I am I I have to stop sharing and OK, uh, just I will show you just uh, the video without sound because we haven't time. As a final product of this project, we have 
made nine green behavior codes. Uh, in fact, we have made green behavior code for each team. This is the green behavior code of team one created collaboratively with Scratch. Team two, the same thing. Team nine, the same thing, etc. And as a final product of our project, we have made we have we have a winner after voting in a live event among students. Uh, the winner was the team eight, and this is the video of uh, team eight. Uh, can I stop sharing and share again to show you the video? Uh, yes, uh, or you can you can also share the uh, link to the video in the chat. Yes, I will do yes, it. Yes, please do it. Yes. Uh, thank you, thank you, Iman, so much for for this wonderful project. Uh, it's great to see how uh, eat winning and cold week go together. So really, really amazing activities for your students and also. Uh, uh, a great example of collaboration, inter international collaboration. So well done, Iman, and thank you for sharing. And please share uh, the video in the chat. And also, uh, if you can, if you want, you can share this way. Uh, yes. But uh, uh, we will share all the presentations uh, in the uh, in the MOOC uh, later this week. Uh, along with uh, this um, recording. Uh, I just wanted to uh, to say uh, that there have been some questions in the chat uh, and uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you to all the speakers who have uh, already responded. Uh, maybe just uh, uh, to repeat that uh, um, it would be great if you could share your videos uh, in the chat. So uh, especially for you, Leopoldo, that was a question. Uh, so um, the participants would like to see uh, your Mondrian video as well, or the videos if you can share them. And okay. everybody else, please feel free to do so. Uh, Eugenia, yes, go ahead. I just want to wrap up. So thank you everyone for joining us in this uh, this evening. Thank you as well for staying a bit longer. And especially thank you to all the wonderful speakers. I think it has been really, really inspiring to hear you all and to see all your plans for Code Week and your wonderful ideas. So once again, thank you very much. Indeed, as Ariana said, you will find in the coming days the recording and the slides on the live events page. So do check it out. And once again, a reminder that the course deadline is on the 27th of October. So you have until then, until the end of the day to finish the quiz in module two and as well to submit your final course activity, which I hope that now you are you have a lot of inspiration and that you have a lot of great ideas to finalize your your this MOOC and to uh, add your activity to the code week map. So once again, thank you for everyone for joining us. I hope that you have found this uh, live event useful. You'll find all of the details on the live events page. So have a very good evening. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, Ariana, as well. Um, once again, happy Code Week. And don't thank forget you. to add your activities to the Code Week app. <laughs> thank you. Happy coding and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have you. a nice evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Good evening, everybody.